lot of fun. And I'm finally getting to sit in an aircraft that I've wanted to sit in for a little while, and I'm hoping to fly this thing eventually. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Chip Irwin, who is bringing in the Zigolo. And you've done something to this that changed it quite a bit from just two months ago at Seabrake. What did you do to this thing? I'm looking down here at this cage, and I'm seeing yeah. numbers that I don't understand fully. What's up? This is a perfect platform for the emergent technology of electric flight. And one of my philosophies is not talking about things I'm going to do, but doing it first. And so I just got the last components in on mo Monday morning, wired this thing up, flew it for five minutes at uh, Lake of Salt, and it seemed to work fine. So I flew it here. And that's a cross country flight. It's a cross country flight. It's a cross country flight of three miles or thereabouts. Well, it's but still uh, in a brand know. new thing. Uh, I don't really. I haven't. Cal I haven't uh, proven my endurance yet. I was waiting for you to fly it. <laughs> See how long the battery lasts. I think I have a half hour battery. Uh, but it works. Not only does it work, but it works really well. <clears throat> well 25 horsepower, same as the gas. Ah, battery. okay. But you, if you are using the Vitarazzi. It's flying. Yeah, the, the Vitrazzi 25 horsepower two-stroke. Which is a which neat is, little engine, and it's, but it's still going to make a certain too. amount of noise. But that's quiet, too, for a, for a two-stroke. But now all you hear is the prop noise. And it's so so smooth and so quiet. It's just a, 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 a nice, nice condition. Yeah. It just feels great. All right, so Chip, I want you to walk me around the controls of this. I mean, beside the stick and rudder, that part we know about, that part's similar. Uh, you got a radio over here as well, that part we all know. It's the stuff over here that looks a little different. Uh, for example, where's my throttle to make this thing go? Well, what you have is a potentiometer, which uh, basically it's like a rheostat, and you just turn your fat, turn on the motor on, you just move it a little bit, and the motor starts spinning, just like your ceiling fan. Ah, uh, okay, okay. See, it's actually turning. <laughs> Oh. oh yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> so it works. That's it a does good work. Sign. And and so you got an on and switch. You never have, what's so nice about it is, is I always know when my motor is going to restart. And I, 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 even when I cut it, I, I go down to idle. There's no idle. You just turn it off or slide it it's all the way down. It's kind of yeah, like a Prius car. I don't, have, I don't have to worry about a, a, a Armstrong starter braking or a, a two-stroke loading up. You know, maybe I know they're two-stroke. Or the engine are a lot cooling better. off to where it's too hard to start. Yeah. Yeah, it, back in the well, in the early '80s, uh, that happened all the time. Now it only happens once in a while, but it still happens. It happens once in a while, and it's very annoying when yeah. it does. Which means people don't ever turn the engine off then. Right. Now the concept behind this aircraft. I mean, I'm looking out this direction, and I'm seeing down the wing. This is a pretty good sized wing. It's a, thir it's a yeah, 36.4 feet. 36 and foot wingspan. Yeah, That's it, bigger than a cord. almost anything out here. Well, everything. It's bigger than everything out here. They call it a motor glider, but it's not a glider, it's a floater. It has so low light wing loading that you catch a thermal and just sit there with low sink rate. You're not talking, it's got the lift to drag ratio, 11.1 is, is nothing. Well, it's, it's 11 not a glider light. ratio, but the sink rate at 275 feet per minute, is, the thermals are going up higher than that. And you're sitting there in the thermals. On many, many days, I'm an old soaring pilot yeah. too, and on a lot of days, the lift is stronger than that on and, a lot of days. And this flies even on a fairly weak day. It's so. really happy to fly all day at 25, 30 miles an hour. Wow. So which, you, you which if you're trying to stay, stay in a thermal, easy. going through it too fast is a is a problem. You have to really learn how to do that in a sailplane. Yeah. So it's, it's a kind of an art. Yeah. Uh, whereas it, at that speed, just, just right. basically and turn. And if you can fly that slow, you have a little outlet break, which means you can fly longer on electric power. Uh, and they're the two to two. Ah, yes, right, right, right. So Speed adds drag, right. and uh, drag is a, right. a negative for a gliding machine. Right. So you can use this two ways. You can take off during the day like a self launching glider, burn up half the battery and get up 2,000 feet, and then turn it off. And have plenty of reserve to jump from thermal to thermal or to get back to the airport and always know you're going to have that fan spinning when you want it to. And then have another launch, or a third one if you have enough battery left. Uh, the other pilot was going to want to fly in the evening on the nice smooth air and not, and because you don't go anywhere, airplanes make a lot of noise, right? But they're there for 30 seconds, right? And they're gone. The old right? ultralights make a lot of noise, but they're, they're annoying because they don't go anywhere. <laughs> they're big to see when you don't have a gun, you know. <laughs> but then you have a quiet airplane and you go up in a smooth, quiet flight for the evening and don't bother anybody, it's great.
Okay, so whether you are or are not a soaring pilot, I happen to be a soaring enthusiast. And, and for me, it's an obvious thing to go, hey, uh, how fast does this climb? It's about 500 feet a minute. Okay, so let's just say 500 feet a minute. You got two sets of batteries here that have, you don't know for sure. You have to just put it on, but about 30 minutes worth? On, on, on paper, mathematically, it's 45 minutes. Okay, so let's say it's clearly I'm pretty pressure sure I get first. Yeah, practically I think 30 minutes is a pretty safe number. Okay, so I'm going to do a little math here. 500 feet a minute climb rate, a decent day in Florida with when there are lifting conditions going on. You get the white puppy clouds, that's a pretty good time there's lift up there. Uh, 500 feet a minute for four minutes. So three minutes, you know. Yes, but 1,500 feet. Four or five, even yeah. if I said five minutes to get up higher, yeah. I've only used up somewhere around one sixth of the battery potential, roughly well, speaking. Well, at that uh, power setting, you probably use it more like a third. Okay, so a third. Let's yeah. say I use up a third of it, but that's going to put me at two or three thousand feet. Right. And at which point, thermals. on a most days, I'm going to easily catch thermals. I don't want the engine on anymore. Then I want that pure quiet that I get right. then. Right. So I turn it off, but I know I've still got 20 minutes or so left in the battery. Or, that's right. or 15 minutes at the very least. At, at substantial power to drive me back to the airport or, or, catch the next or to go over to the next thermal. That's a very exciting thing, and, and you can do that with the Bitterazzi motor that you had on there too. That'll do the same job, but I'm not so sure that I'll start it up again if I've stayed up for two or yeah. three hours. That engine's fully cooled well, I'm down. Sure. I, I, I'm really confident with that engine. Well, I know you said they're but, better today than they used to be, something like the but not like this, where yeah. if I nudge that potentiometer, yeah. that throttle for an electric aircraft, it's on, there's no if hands or butts, as right. long as I've retained some juice. And that box up front tells me how much juice I've got left to some extent, right? Oh, no, it's very accurate. Okay. It, it has a calculation in there. It's designed specifically for this battery pack and this motor. And it tells you what your current temperature is, what your average is used, how much uh, uh, voltage you use on the battery, and based on your current you draw, how many minutes of battery you have left. Okay. So you can see your So time left is all you really care about. Yeah. When you're doing this, you, do, you just care about, okay, it's going to take me X long to get back to where I want to or to the next thermal. I've got that much time left. No problem. And so then, you know, this is the big heavy part. Back here, you got, <laughs> looks like nothing. Yep. Well, we were just up by the batteries, which is the heavy part of this equation. The motor is, it doesn't look very heavy, and it's certainly very simple. What, what, what kind of weight and, and, and power do we have well, here? Well, it may not look like it, but that's 25 horsepower. Wow, no, it doesn't look like it at all. And that 25 horsepower is the, is the same uh, power as the Viterazzi, the gas engine. Right, wow. So when I flew this the first time and the, and, the, and the second time, I made two takeoffs, it jumped up there just like the gas engine. It just accelerates and it goes. No different. No now, different part, climb either. part of the magic is the weight of the aircraft. So, what is yeah. it, what is with those batteries on board? How much are you weighing here, approximately? Well, it's about uh, 275 pounds. Okay. Uh, considering the allowance you have for the parachute, that meets the uh, part 103. Right. You're allowed 254 in ultralight, and you can get another 24 pounds for a parachute system. Yeah. So that's uh, 284 pounds. All right. right. Excuse me. Uh, can't do the math in my head right now, but uh, more weight than that. 278, there you go. 278, 278 pounds, and you are? I'm right, a, I'm right above there. I haven't really had a chance to weigh it exactly. Sure. But, but you can make legal weight as an ultralight with well, this battery pack. I have 50 motor. pounds of battery, I know that. Okay. And, I'm just, and the, uh, the engine weighs 25 pounds, and the Vitrazzi weighs 25 pounds. Okay. Now I took off the um, gas and the right. gas tank and the seat and the seat rack, and I put on a much lighter seat. And I put on 50 pounds of battery, and I started out at 220. Oh yeah, I don't so, see. Yeah, you're, so, uh, it seems to me like you you are easily within, or maybe not easily, but you are within ultralight weight right. on an electric powered aircraft, which again means no pilot license necessary, no N numbers are necessary, no medical is necessary, and you could sell these things ready to fly if you like. Right. And I don't know anyone's done that yet. No, I don't know that anyone has done that either. Uh, there may have been a trike or two out yeah. there, but in a three-axis airplane. Uh, I'm not familiar with I've it. I've flown it into the show. And uh, yeah, I definitely don't know of that, right? They're, uh, they're flown at the shows. We've yeah. seen them a few times. Right. We're going to see more of this kind of thing, but here's one now. This yeah, is a pretty, I mean, also a pretty reasonable purchase, isn't it? Now we, well, we try to stay away from pricing on these videos because they can last a long time, but get me in the ballpark. Is this $50,000? 50. How many would you want for that? <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half for that.
Now this is a very economical, it's a, a $14,500 kit, which takes 100 hours to build, and that includes the motor and insertion, wow. everything else. But for just a couple thousand more, you can have it completely finished. Okay, so less, less than, well under twenty thousand dollars. Well under. You got an aircraft that yeah, flies. Yeah, that's with a gasoline motor. And you can go up there with yeah. a gasoline motor. The batteries are quite expensive. The motor's quite expensive. Yeah. Electronic. Yeah, but that's so. like buying your fuel. So what, what, what are the batteries uh, at, at your present knowledge about it? Of course, these numbers yeah. will change, folks. So please well, keep that I, I in mind. But I haven't set that price, but five or six thousand dollars by expectation of an upgrade to have electronic, electric uh, powered. And then it, you can you can charge and fly for an hour for seventy five cents. Oh yeah, I know that part. And and how many cycles can of charge? How many times can you recharge those batteries well, again? Some abruptly. batteries are good for three thousand. Wow. And uh, so that could equate exactly to on this, but no, fifteen hundred flying days. You know, that's if you charge it twice a day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fifteen hundred flying days is a lot of flying days. Yeah. yeah. So that's in lieu of buying that much gasoline. So we're talking still only around twenty thousand dollars with the electric, or, or right. somewhere in that range. Right. But well, you prepaid ten years of fuel. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. I just, I just look at it as, as a twenty thousand dollar airplane that gets you flying right now. Right now. And I don't know. And, and LSAs are a little, have disappointed a bit in price. So they have gone up quite a bit in price. And here's yeah. here's one that's very inexpensive. And again, no pilot's license, no registration, no medical. All yeah. those benefits to it. So, yes, it may not be the aircraft for everybody, but it's certainly an aircraft of very keen interest to many, myself among them. Uh, where can we find out even more stuff about uh, the aircraft, the Ziggler aircraft, and what you're doing, Chip? Well, on my website, I, I try to keep it up to date. Uh, so, I, I put a couple pictures of the electric on, and as soon as I fly it, I'll have some specifications. But, uh, like I said, it's it's looking and feeling good now, and, and it, adds, it makes fun flying even that much more fun. And where is the, so, what's the web address? We'll Aero put it up Marine, on the screen. AeroMarine-LSA.com. All right, great stuff. We've done videos with Chip before. You can find that and information about all of the aircraft that Chip has represented in his career, and uh, many, many more at ByDanJohnson.com or BYDanJohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining Chip and I here at Sun and Fun.